And take three. Welcome back to the Jason Benicki Experience Podcast. As always, I am your host, Jason Benicki. You can add me on Snapchat, Twitter, and Instagram at J-A-S-O-N-B-A-N-I-C-K-I. Uh, as always, please like the Facebook page for the podcast, the Jason Benicki Experience Podcast. Add the podcast on Instagram at Jason Benicki Experience. And most importantly, share this with your friends, family, neighbors, Co-workers, hell, pick somebody you don't like and share it with them. Uh, as a Subscribe, rate, and review on iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play Music, Amazon, Satchel, CastBox, iHeartRadio. As always, ratings and reviews help move us up the charts and help people find us and help grow us a bigger audience. Uh, if you notice the take three part at the beginning of this episode, uh, that's because I've tried recording this twice today already and both times... Uh, didn't really like the way it came out, so I'm starting over one more time to try and get it out tonight before the end of the night so I can keep up with my new daily micro-podcasting. And that's the nice thing with this. I'm hoping that as uh, as I get through it, I'll have to do less and less takes. But hey, you know, if I only throw one out, it's only 10 or 15 minutes. Uh, and why did I throw out the f- first two I recorded today? I kept trying to talk about how I think for us to move the country forward... Uh, we need to practice our skills talking across the aisle, talking, you know, Democrats talking to Republicans, Republicans talking to Democrats. And I really, truly believe that. I really do think that, you know, if we're ever going to attack the real problems in this country, we have to stop looking for the Democratic answer or the Republican answer. Stop viewing these through the lenses of, well, my sports team won and I don't care how bad they're doing or messing up the country. It's my team, so I'm going to stick up for them and or booing the other team just because they're the other team. And this all precipitated because I was messing around on Facebook earlier and saw a post on Fox News talking about the terrorist attack. And, uh, you know, the people were on there, oh, libtards, this this is why we want to do, you know, this is why uh, Trump's trying to do the immigrant ban to keep us safe, you know, completely ignoring the fact that the guy who perpetrated the terror attack in London yesterday was born and raised in London. So an immigrant ban there would have done zero to keep those people safer. And, you know, then you see people trying to point that out and then you just get more of the back and forth yelling. And it's a thousand plus comments at the time I did it. And it wasn't even that old. of just people yelling back and forth, back and forth. And I was like, well, I need to go on here and talk to my my fans and say, hey, look, we need to reach out across this aisle and talk and, and figure it out. So that way we can go after the greedy rich bastards who are just robbing all us working class people and get our shit together. And get the country working again for the middle class and the working class and the poor people and just the average Joe down the block. And then you know what I thought to myself after listening to two episodes? Forget about it. You fucking 90% of the people today out there that are out there don't want to hear shit from me about how we need to reach across the aisle and compromise. Uh, Like I was talking about the polarization of this country and I'm like, you know... We really need to stop being so polarized. We got to focus on the American solutions, the American answers. And I felt really good about it. And then you know what I realized as I started listening to it again? Forget about it. Ain't nobody going to listen to me about that. We've already made up our minds. We've already decided what our answers are. We don't want to go out and seek new facts. We don't want to challenge our premises. You know, this is why cognitive dissonance is so strong, is that people don't even want to understand and learn what cognitive dissonance is. So do me a favor, get on Google, Google cognitive dissonance, actually go to Google scholar and Google cognitive dissonance in there and read some actual academic articles on it. And it can explain to you much better than I could in a short synopsis in my little 10 minute podcast where I'm going to just call this episode, forget about it. Cause I had a better idea for today. And then I realized 90% of the people in the United States don't want to hear it. They want to hear their preconceived, preformed opinions in their head echoed right back to them. Like whether you're on the right or the left, we both both sides like their little echo chamber bumbles, and they hate to have them burst. And it's even funnier when the people in the conspiracy theories hate you know that hate both sides hate to have their bubbles burst. You know, it's not not a liberal snowflake or an uneducated uh, right problem or anything. This is a human condition problem. People want to hear their opinions back to them 
confirmed. They don't want to challenge them. They don't want to have to evaluate the evidence and say, man, maybe I was wrong on this. Maybe I was right. Let's try this again. How about with this information now? Did, did I change my opinion? Oh, wait. The evidence in front of me changes my mind, and now I'll have to reformulate my opinion. That doesn't happen in the United States anymore. This is why we struggle with things like climate change, because people don't want to understand the scientific method. You have a theory. You have a hypothesis. You test it using your available evidence. You get a result. If the result confirms your your hypothesis, you do it again and again and again until it's strong enough that you 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 know it can become confirmed as a theory. However, you keep trying to disprove it after a point too. You work very hard to say, well, maybe this isn't right. And, and this is you know wh- where I think we struggle is because people don't want to try to prove themselves wrong, like. There are, there are many things that we deal with in, in politics, in government, and everything like that that are very much opinion issues, and there's no right or wrong to an opinion. It's just somebody's opinion, and, and we've got to work better at being empathetic to understanding other people's opinions and then ex- trying to explain our opinion and say why they feel it's better than somebody else's opinion without calling them names, but I really think that's the way to go. But what do I have to say about that? Forget about it. Ain't nobody going to listen to me anyways. So I had to re-record this just saying, hey, you know, I wanted to get an episode out for you today. I'm going to keep trying to bang away at this micro podcasting, you know, 10, 15 minutes every day. I'm really enjoying it because like I said, when I bang out an episode I don't really enjoy, it doesn't take me much to re-record it for you guys. But again, you know, I had a goal in mind. I had an idea for the day. I really felt good about it. And it was actually my second play because I was going to talk campaign finance reform today. Uh, But like I said, that Fox News article pulled me off the side. I started, you know, reading it on Facebook. And I, you know, I I get aggravated when I see words like libtard or republitard or all those deplorables on the Trump side. Because I feel like these the uh, catchphrases from the political industrial complex that they feed us, whether it's through talk news radio or, you know, you know, CNN, Fox News, MSNBC, The Blaze, wherever you get your news from, they're feeding you bullshit from the political industrial complex so they could keep raising billions of dollars for these campaigns so they can run ridiculous TV ads and distract you from the fact that they're robbing you blind. But then I thought about it and I realized that people who you know, choose to watch MSNBC or choose to watch Fox News, very seldom choose to watch the other one. So what did I say? Forget about that episode. I'm going to get one out anyways, knock it out, kind of sneak my message in here a little bit, saying, hey, the person you live next to isn't all that bad of a person, that they may have voted for somebody that you didn't like for reasons that make rational sense to you if you would talk to them about it instead of yelling and screaming at them. Or they may support a policy that you don't agree with for rational reasons that, that you could understand if you would talk to them about it. And I think that's what we've got to get to is how do we talk to each other without yelling and screaming and name calling and automatic assumptions based on things. Politics shouldn't be like being a Cubs fan or being a Cardinals fan. You know, yes, when I'm a Cubs fan, I definitely want the Cardinals to fail. And if you're a Cardinals fan, you want the Cubs to fail. However, if the Republicans are running a country and I'm a Democrat, I should still want them to do well because the country will do well. And conversely, if you're a Republican and Democrats are running the country, you should want them to do well so that way the country does well and we all do well. But somehow the political industrial complex has convinced us that, no, we need to just vote for our team and root for our teams. And these are the most important things that whether our team wins or not, not whether the country does well or not. So this is how the 1% have been able to rip us off day after day, minute after minute. And then I really, again, like I said, said to myself, forget about it. These people don't want to hear from me about this. So I scrapped that whole episode and kind of cranked up a little bit differently for this one. Like I said, you know, got to have one out every day. I feel like this is going to gonna get, get a, be my final take. I feel like take three will be it today. Uh, I'm always going to let you a little in behind the scenes. Uh, and, you know, appreciate you guys. Last night, released that episode. Big, you know, great one day response already. Has me excited about doing another episode. You know, I'm going to try and bank away a few for future rep- use. If that way I've got some going on, I can get it, 
have a pre-released episode already in the shoot. Uh, so that's going to be this episode for today. We're already 10 or so minutes in. So thanks for listening to this quick episode of the Jason Benicki Experience Podcast. Please subscribe, rate, review, share with your friends, share with your mother, share with your brother, share with that annoying coworker you don't like. At, you know, rate, subscribe, review, iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play Music, Amazon, CastBox, Satchel Podcast Player, uh, iHeartRadio. You know, add me on Snapchat, Instagram, Twitter, J S O N B A N I C K I. Add the Facebook page, like the Facebook page, the Jason Badicki Experience Podcast. Add add it add us on Instagram, Jason Vidicki Experience. I'm going to try and be more active on that Instagram. Maybe do some Instagram videos. Give you some quick thirty seconds shorts of me ranting and raving like a lunatic on there. Uh, let's see how this works. Give this a few more days. Build on out and go from there. Thanks everybody and peace. <laughs>